Astronomy GCSE topic 14, larger stars. We've talked about the sun. Now, we also need to know about the life cycle of much bigger stars. I've summarized on this diagram. I, I recommend you learn this diagram. We start with a nebula. Then the, inside the nebula, we get a protostar. Many times what happens next, it, it all depends on the mass. If the mass of the protostar is less than 0.1 m, m is the mass of our sun. If it's less than a tenth of the mass of our sun, then fusion will never start. It will become hot and it will glow and it will give off infrared, but it won't become a star. It will become a brown dwarf, a basically a, a hot, warm blob but not hot enough for fusion to start. If it's greater than 0.1 m, then fusion will start and it will become a main sequence star. Uh, if its mass is between 0.1 m up to 10 m, then that is what our sun does and it will end up as a white dwarf. If the mass of the star is greater than 10 m, which is typical for kind of a, a type O, B, A star, if its mass is greater than 10 m, then when it dies, it will become a supernova. It will become a supergiant and then this will collapse and explode as a supernova. And then there are two things that we may be left with. Uh, and it may be a neutron star or it may become a black hole. And again, this will depend on the mass of the core. If the mass of the core is uh, less than 1.44 m, then it's a white dwarf. If, if it's between 1.44 m and 3 m, uh, or I believe 2.8 m actually, then it's a neutron star. If it's greater than 2.8 m, it becomes a black hole. So what happens next will depend on the mass of the core. Below the Chandrasekhar limit, which is 1.44 m, Electrons can't be squeezed together. There's not enough gravity to squeeze them together and we just get a white dwarf. And that, that is what's going to happen to our sun below the Chandrasekhar limit. From 1.44 m to 3 m, you can squeeze the electrons together. Electrons are, and protons are squeezed into neutrons, but then you can't squeeze the neutrons together. And this is called neutron degeneracy pressure. Basically, you can't squish neutrons together and it can't collapse any more than that. This becomes a neutron star. The one in the middle, that is a neutron star. If the mass of the core is greater than 3m, then there's enough gravity to just squish everything together. Matter collapses completely. The gravity can't be stopped and everything is squished together into a point of infinite density. Yeah, it's a singularity, a point singularity called a black hole. Matter collapses completely into a singularity. Let's talk about neutron stars. Neutron stars are very dense. Imagine the mass of our sun squeezed into 10 kilometers. They are very, very dense. Uh, I believe if you got the, uh, stuff that a neutron star is made of the size of a matchbox it would be about 10 billion tons it's made almost entirely of neutrons now when the star collapsed then if you imagine a, a skater now when a skater pulls their arms in they spin faster and this is what happens to a star as it collapses as its radius gets smaller it spins faster and faster and faster and we could end up with something called a pulsar and a pulsar is a rotating neutron star and some of them rotate very very quickly possibly hundreds of times a second i believe they've discovered one which the record is about 760 times a second it rotates at so this thing is rotating it has a very strong magnetic field it's rotating on a tilted axis. Do you remember precession? Then many, many topics ago, precession, the precession of the Earth. Uh, it emits beams of radiation. 
mostly radio waves, beams of radio waves coming out of this pulsar. Uh, and depending on its orientation, there may be a lighthouse effect so that we get flash, 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 flash of pulsars. When these were first discovered, some people thought it was evidence of aliens trying to get in touch with us because we were getting these regular pulses of radio waves. But then it was realized it was actually a type of star. A spinning neutron star is a pulsar. Black holes. Oh, uh, now, their mass is so great that nothing can stop gravity from collapsing them. They collapse completely. Your electrons and your protons and your neutrons all get absolutely squished together into a point singularity, a point of infinite density. Why are they called a black hole? Because their escape velocity is greater than the speed of light. They don't emit light. What we actually see is we see light coming from the accretion disk, the disk of material surrounding them. And also looking at this picture, it's the light also from the stars behind them get bent as it goes near the, the black hole. Anything that gets within a certain distance, which is called the event horizon, will never escape. If you get too close to a black hole, then you will get sucked in, you'll get spaghettified. There will be no way that you can escape. Even light can't escape. There could be millions of black holes in the Milky Way. There could be lots and lots and lots of them. And at the centre of every galaxy, it is believed that there is a super massive black hole, a very, very large black hole. The one at the centre of the Milky Way apparently has a mass which is bigger than four million suns. A very, very, very massive, super massive black hole at the centre of the Milky Way. What evidence is there of black holes? Well, I'm going to talk about three bits of evidence here. Their gravitational effect on other objects. If you look at the animation, this is uh, the centre of our galaxy. And if you look at the centre of our galaxy and you look at the stars near the centre of our galaxy, they are orbiting something and they are orbiting something very, very, very massive that we can't see. And that is the in Sagittarius A, it's called. And, and it's around the centre of our Milky Way and we've observed stars orbiting the, the centre of our Milky Way. It's gravitational effect on electromagnetic waves, gravitational lensing. Uh, and I know that light doesn't have have mass but it can still be bent by gravity and if ever you get in to uh, general relativity you'll understand why a very famous picture on the right which is only about a year old and this is of a black hole not in our galaxy but in another galaxy and what we actually see is the way that light is being bent around the edges of the black hole how black holes were actually discovered was, or the very first evidence for black holes, was that the accretion disk close to the black hole is spinning around very, 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 very fast, incredibly fast. It gets extremely hot and it gets so hot that it emits X-rays and we have detected these X-rays. That was the first evidence for the existence of black holes. We also get jets of material being chucked out from the middle as well.